Well, gosh, you know, I'm lucky I didn't die because of, uh, you know, most of the people that went through what I did do die. And that's... What, so what, what, what happened to you health-wise here? Sepsis. Sepsis? Yes, uh, uh, which was, I, I didn't know what that was either, uh, but it's a, it's a serious infection. Um, I still uh, have, I guess, some un unanswered questions, but uh, basically it all started in, in San Francisco. Um, my a, a good friend of mine passed away, someone that I had uh, known for many years, and we were drag entertainers and stuff. Um, and I had come up to do, I think I mentioned that I do stand-up comedy, and so I was asked to kind of do a irreverent, Sort of uh, homage to my friend on stage uh, for her her uh, memorial gathering, and then and I I just attributed it maybe to the emotions of the evening or when I sat down. I still had my hands and feet in it back then. This was the last time I did, um, and uh, I I finished my my set and I went and sat down in the audience, and immediately this real heavy. <clears throat> feeling in my chest it was like uh, something just kind of broke or whatever and it just kind of sank down to my stomach and i attributed it i thought this must just be the emotions that i'm feeling because uh this was one of the most shocking deaths that I've, i mean encountered many people die over the years but this was one that i never i wasn't prepared for so at any rate um i i thought well it was the emotion of the evening but i started getting really hot really it was like I was all dressed in drag. I had a wig and all this stuff. And so uh, I just started taking that stuff out because I was so hot. And then uh, we were at a big theater and they had some, uh, you know, like security slash uh, uh, not really medical personnel, but just people that were kind of there to help with the audience and stuff. And so I sat in the back room with them, and then we decided that, uh, you know, maybe I should go to the emergency room. So I did. And apparently I'd had a heart infarction. And um, the that's why I, when it first happened, I, I think the emergency room staff may have thought, well, this person's dressed in drag. They're probably on drugs. They've been partying. They've come from a party or something. So I think they probably thought I was intoxicated or in some way, and they didn't really uh, – React, but it, it, they needed. I, it turned out I needed uh, ultimately heart surgery, and so um, in the process is uh, when the, they had to go in and work on my heart. I I develop. I got sepsis. So um, the sepsis is something you catch. Yeah, you get it in in the hospital. Apparently, most often. Um, and you had this previously. F no, I never had before. Um, so you think you got it that night? Yeah, it must have happened there at the hospital because I don't know. So you had a heart attack and then in the hospital. Yeah, I got the, uh, you know, because uh, that's the only thing that could have happened. Um, and um, then the next, you know, then next thing I know, I'm in the hospital and um, they, I was unconscious and uh, they they had been in touch with uh, friends and family and they were even talking about end of life care you know, deciding if I was going to make it or not. And I guess they had to use uh, something that they, maybe I think they're called pressors, but basically uh, it restricted the blood flow so that the my blood was not flowing to my extremities, my hands and feet. And uh, it was almost like they had, like had tourniquets or something that they weren't getting any um, blood flow. And so they just, they died off. <laughs> and then when I regained consciousness, I was like, I looked down and my hands were all brown and they looked like mummy hands and my feet also. And I was, I, it didn't occur to me that they were going to have to be amputated at that point. I was just still kind of in shock. I was like, oh my, you know, what the hell? I mean, my hands, look at them. They look terrible. I, I can never, I'll never be able to use them again. And uh, that, but so they don't, they didn't amputate them right away, but uh, I guess uh, it was about two weeks on that when they did amputate them. So um, they basically explained to me that, you know, it was the price I had to pay in order to stay alive because the, uh, the blood flow had to go to my brain and my heart and, uh, you know, the vital is there, is organs. Is there any legal 
after effects? I, I, that's you know I uh, we thought about that too, but um, after this happened to me, there's more and more people that have also been through this. Um, I met a, I met a woman who was a survivor of a brown recluse spider attack and she lost her hands and feet too uh it's just uh you know she the sepsis got her through this i guess this the spider bite and you know i don't think they they didn't catch it fast enough because she uh, seemed like she lived in a um like a rural area and and i think she she didn't realize what had happened to her she just passed out at home and so I think it was several hours before her daughter came home and caught and found her there and uh, quickly took her to the hospital. But by that point, it, the damage had been done. And so but it sounds like in your case, it's the fault of the hospital. I, I thought so, too. And uh, I mean, we're not sure uh, if we have a, a case to even bring to for malpractice or whatever, but uh, it only happened in May of this year, and um, that's what lawyers are for. Well, yeah, we talked to a lawyer, and then uh, we felt like he wasn't really uh, pursuing it. We thought what happened must have happened in the emergency room, you know, like the the whatever um, failings occurred. I feel like we feel like they happened in the emergency room yeah. because it seems like it's a matter of urgent urgent to action um so i i don't know what, what we might see what happens but in the meantime you know i'm i'm still dealing with the the fallout of what happened and i am in it's still in the desert but i'm in uh, like palm springs and um an assisted living facility which is uh, a little bit grim because i'm the youngest person there so i'm suddenly in a kind of a an old folks home which i mean it's pleasant the, the you know they have food every three meals a day and you 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 get cared for but um i that i don't i don't want that to be my life from now on just kind of existing and you know a lot of these people are are 70s and and 80s and um, have other serious chronic health problems and so the topic of conversation is like what <laughs> they ate last and if they're going to play bingo tonight and, you know, when their next doctor visit is. So they're not exactly uh, a lot of fun to, <laughs> to be around. Um, and I, I want to try to still have, get something out of life. I, I mean, I still want to do stand-up comedy. Uh, I know I can't stand up anymore. And, I mean, I do have... Uh, the potential for prosthetics, and uh, I I was fitted for some prosthetic legs that didn't really fit well, or you know they're very uncomfortable to to bear you know to put my weight on you know it's particularly this right leg I just I couldn't um, stand in them, mm. and then uh, the the hands um, that's a different uh, setup, and uh, there are some hands that are supposedly going to be ready next month for me to try and um, they um, they respond to like muscle movement in the uh, forearm so in in some ways I'm lucky <clears throat> compared to a lot, a lot of people have higher uh, points of where their residual limb has been uh, amputated so I've got longer longer limbs than most people but uh, it is a bitch to Try to go through life without hands. What, I mean, what is this doing to you emotionally to go through this? Uh, well, I mean, it's the whole spectrum. I, I've, I've, I've been complete, very depressed and hopeless feeling, and uh, it's been great that uh, people have reached out, and a lot of people have, been, have done. People have given me GoFundMe. And thank God for that, because if I didn't have the GoFundMe, I wouldn't have been able to uh, get into the assisted living that I'm in. And just the other stuff that I've needed for my, you know, to get by. And um, it's just been a, a lot of loss, but it's also been a lot of reflection about the way life can turn on a dime. And I, I think about other people's experiences where, you know, maybe they've had a 
an accident, a car accident or something like that, or just some random act of, of God or whatever you want to call it. You know, it's uh, maybe this is redemption in some way. You know, I, I've told you that I was a kleptomaniac and, you know, in some cultures they cut your hands off <laughs> for if you steal. So I'm like, it crossed my mind, like, wow, is this God's way of saying, you know, this is your punishment? But um, I, all that's behind me now. I mean, I, I do, I, I get SSI, which is not a lot. It's not enough to really live comfortably on. So therefore, you know, the GoFundMe has definitely been um, beneficial in that but uh, you still have your friends um well you know uh, people come and go in my in how, how is in, lady sham lady sham is still uh interested in becoming famous uh, you know and uh, pursuing that she was on catfish and uh, i think she's had some spiritual changes too she uh, was going to come with us today but had to do something in ventura and so she was going to help me with my get my makeup together and all that but um she's got her agenda i think she does pretty well with uh, she does her bing she has a bingo that she hosts that's right she told me and she's that. got a lot of uh boyfriends and stuff that to uh, follow her around through that so um i don't know what her uh next <laughs> steps will be in life but what, what, what have you learned from from all of this to be grateful for every day and be grateful for the life that I do have. Um, and obviously I couldn't have ever seen this coming for me. Um, I, uh, in my twenties and thirties, I, I lost a lot of people, friends of mine who uh, had died from AIDS or from drug overdoses and a variety of, you know, cause I was in the world of, of these kind of, kind of uh, fringe people. So uh, in many ways, I'm lucky to have survived as long as I have already, you know, because I, I think, well, I, I mentioned earlier that I, I went to a memorial for my friend who died, and um, she had been one of my good drag queen friends for 30 years in San Francisco. And so she was such a tough character. I just didn't ever think she would die, you know, like for some reason, some people just, it doesn't occur to you that it doesn't seem possible. I mean, because she was such a part of my life that I just, you know, expected her to be around forever. And but uh, <clears throat> it, that wasn't meant; it wasn't to be. And um, and I'm still here for some reason. And I'd like to hope that there's some valid purpose for me to continue living. I'd like to continue pursuing um, acting and stuff like that. Maybe I could, you know, people. They, they don't go, they don't have freak shows anymore like they used to, but it's like, all right, I read this book called Geek Love. I don't know if you're familiar with that title, but uh, they wanted to be geek. They wanted to be in freak shows. You know, they, they, they was like, exploit me, let me do that. So, I mean, I kind of have that attitude now. Like maybe if there's somebody making a horror movie, they need an amputee, sign me up. I want to, you know, try out for that and stuff. So... Uh, I mean, I'd, I'd like to be as visible as possible, and uh, that's why I've been, you know, a friend is making a documentary about what's happened to me and uh, the craziness of my life, and so we'll see how that how that comes together and how it plays out. But um, I'm not ready to, to give up and, and go away yet. I mean, there, there are times when I get very down and, think, and feel hopeless and uh, in but people lift me up, and I'm really grateful for uh, the, the what your channel. Uh, to be honest, I, when I first met you, I, did, I had no, I, I didn't realize how big you really are, <laughs> and what a what what a broad scope uh, your your channel had, and uh, how many. And and I read some of the comments, and I was really in tears and touched by how kind people were. Yeah, it's really nice. And I was like. Wow, wow, it's it's not it, it makes me um, it, feel, it gives me a, a sense of, of hope and makes me want to carry on and uh, I'm just I, I feel very grateful about all that. Will, will you still do comedy? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, certainly it's it's going to be different now. I mean, mm -hmm. I yeah. have a wheelchair uh, today. You know, we're, since we're traveling to see you, um, I couldn't bring my power chair. It's a big, heavy chair. But uh, that gives me a lot of mobility. And um, 
so I can get, I mean, I can get in a wheelchair and, um, you know, use a, uh, hold a microphone and make amputee jokes or whatever, you know, and try to um, make lemon uh, lemonade out of lemons. And, uh, yeah, I do want to keep doing stand-up. And, um, but, of course, right now I think I'm still in the ma- settling into my basic day-to-day uh health and and, uh, and and care and stuff like that. There's still a lot of rehabilitation to be done. How, how um, old are you now? I'm in my 50s. I'm uh, 56, 56, which is actually, you know, the youngest of the people in, in the uh, assisted living place where I am. So mm-hmm. I'm the, the baby in the, in the area. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not ready to be – uh, geriatric yet I mean granted I've got limitations but without my hands and feet but I, I'm most excited about the hands because uh, I think that will give me a lot more independence uh, you know you need hands for everything to open doors cans and all that stuff so and it's only been a, a relatively short period you know May. Yeah, so it hasn't been a year So yet. it's not even a year yet that uh, we, we take our hands and feet for for granted, don't we? Of course. And I used I used to be tall. I was six foot three, and now I'm you know I, I don't know how tall I am now. Maybe I'm like maybe five five four or something like that. But you know I haven't stood I haven't been able to really stand up ever since this happened. So, but. There's always new technology. I mean, it's amazing the uh, advances that have been made. And everybody always sends me videos about, look at this person running a marathon with blades on his feet and, mm-hmm. you know, all these people that are great successes. And so, I mean, I, I don't need to be a mar- run a marathon, but I think I would like to be able to, to walk again. People with one amputation um, – are, are better set. I mean, I think if you've got one good, good leg, it makes you, it gives you better balance. Mm-hmm. So when you have two artificial legs, it's, I mean, obviously it's like walking on stilts. So you don't have any sensation down there and you, you know, you, it's a whole new uh, ball game to try to, but I do have more uh, residual leg than a lot of people do. At least I still have my knee joints. So hopefully, um, I think I, once I get used to the hands for a while, then I'll um, move on to the feet and uh, we'll see what happens next. But, Did you feel like karma is is part of this? You mentioned that earlier. Uh, well, it's crossed my mind. And I, I mean, if it is true, uh, well, is karma coming for other people <laughs> who've done far worse than I have? But, uh, you know, it's, it gives me pause. It may be, I mean, I can't, but waste my time comparing myself to other people because it only just makes me resentful. And, you know, some people, they look like their lives are wonderful, but we don't always see everything that go, that is happening. So uh, same is true for me. I don't, I mean, my life is not wonderful. It's not m- totally miserable either. It's, it is what it is. And uh, life uh, continues to be a mystery. And I, uh, hopefully have learned something from this and hopefully can help other people down that you know people have said that i'm inspirational i find that kind of funny but because i never set myself up to be that way but uh i i think the fact that i just want i don't want to give up yet i want to continue to have a life and pursue my dreams and stuff like that i still have dreams and hopes and I'd like to be more independent. I'd, I'd like to move out of the assisted living place and maybe get a a little, like a mobile home out in the desert somewhere. I like I like being in the desert and um, so. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're doing well. It's good to see you again too. You're and, looking very well. You look happier and healthier than oh, I remember well, you from last time. Or maybe it's being, being, being in of, Santa Monica. Being away from Skid Row is helpful. Yeah, I think. I, th- I think you're absolutely right because you know in San Francisco, uh, I was in the uh, the bad neighborhood, the Tinder one, and I think just that degradation, uh, just the, being the, around that bad being energy. around, it just brings you down mm-hmm. uh, by con- by osmosis. It just has this way of, 
you just feel like, oh, everybody's so hopeless, you know. Yeah, I, so, I was tough for a long time, but yeah. after a while, it catches up and. Oh yeah, it it sneaks in, it 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 it, uh, it erodes at your uh, you know, and now I mean where I am now is very it's actually pretty posh to be honest. You know, people drive around in Rolls Royces and stuff like that. So it's definitely it's really very far cry from what I'm uh, used to, but. I'm glad you. Well, I'm glad you're in a nice place. Well, it's a comfortable place, but I mean, I, I it's not where I want to be for a whole for a lot longer. I mean, I think it, it's going to become too boring. Yeah, it'd be too boring for a yeah. crazy guy like yourself. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I want to see some more, <laughs> more and more of life. I like L.A., you know, but uh, I've I've thought of, I've wondered if if there's a possibility that I can find something in L.A. Uh, that I'm sure kind you of can. yeah. So we'll see how how life plays out for me. But. All right. Well, Pippi, it's great seeing you again. It's great to see you, Mark. And uh, Thank you for having I'm me. I'm glad you survived that rough patch, but uh, yeah, your attitude seems great. That's what they tell me. And, <laughs> you know, I, I try to, I try to uh, be uh, positive, and I am grateful that I'm still alive. And um, I, I know how close I came to, to not being alive, so... Um, I, I am uh, ha- happy about that, and I know that there's a lot of work to be done. So, I want to I want to see what comes next. Excellent. All right, Pippi. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right.